Lakers lost to the Celtics on Monday, and Bronny James and Sierra Canyon lost earlier in the day in spring. Bron said the James family took two L's, but Dad still came away proud of his son for the way he handled himself when a young fan threw something at him during his game. I didn't even know what happened until the video evidence showed me today when I got here. I mean, it's just disrespectful. I mean, um, and it was a little kid, too. Um, I don't know how old that little kid was. It's better than his mom and dad for some of the things that he uh, kind of uh, lets off his shoulder. Well, I guess he's taking up for me, too, because I let a lot of go, too. But um, he's a great kid, and, and uh, most importantly, he just loves being around his teammates, being a great kid, you know, being a model citizen in the community and playing the game that he loves to play and being a big brother to his brother and sister. Um, but that shit earlier made me mad when I saw that. Um, it was just disrespectful. LeBron admitted that the extra travel on a game day did cause him some concern, but added he would, quote, break every routine in my life for my family. It was a bit of perspective about what matters for a guy who still finds a way to come out on the right side of the final score more often than not. Dave McMenamin, thank you much. The Lakers' next three games are on the road, which includes a matchup with the Sixers on Saturday, 8.30 Eastern, on ABC. That matchup against Philly is the only game out of their next five in which our basketball power index does not favor the Lakers. Tony. Jay, Houston struggles continued on Monday. James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and the Rockets hosting Chris Paul and the Thunder. Chris would have a great second quarter, though. Here, stealing a bad Rockets inbound and then drills a three from the corner. He had 20 points in the second quarter, the most points he's had in any quarter in his career. He finished with 28 points. Now, the Thunder trailed by as many as 15 in the fourth, but they would go on a run under six to play, down 10. Danilo Gallinari leading the charge in the comeback, drains a three, heating up. And it's an 8-0 run. Just over four minutes to play. It's now a 13-1 run. Gallinari, another three-pointer. He finished with 25 points, 13 rebounds, and it's a 16-1 run. And the Thunder tie the game. So ensuing Rockets possession. Harden, you know, you think he's good at threes, but he struggled all night on those. Under three to play. Rockets up by one here. Another opportunity for him. And he misses. He missed 16 three-pointers tied for the most in a single game in NBA history. I know, Papa, you can't believe it, neither can we. So 220 left to play. Now Rockets lead by one. Westbrook stealing it. Gallinari down low, takes it the other way for the layup. From Gallinari, Rockets up by three. Russ finished with 32, 11, and 12, and then 130 to play. Schroeder pokes it away from Harden, and it's Shea Gilgis Alexander taking it the other way for the dunk. 30 seconds to play now. Thunder still up by one. Schroeder defended by Harden. Drills the jumper. The Thunder lead by three. An ensuing Rockets possession with 15 to play. Westbrook. Westbrook. He dribbles to the corner and heaves that three-pointer, but it is no good. Thunder come back to win it 112 to 107. Here's Coach Mike D'Antoni on what happened in that fourth quarter. But now we're in a period where something's going to go bad, it goes bad. And when it rains, it pours, and it's pouring. And not just older guys, they go, you know, obviously this is disappointing, because all of them are disappointing. Um, but we can choose either to lay back, keep your head up. That's a choice, that's our choice. It's tough, like, you know, especially games like tonight, you know, and even the later game. Uh, you're playing well, playing well, and then just uh, stop doing the things that, you know, get us to lead. Uh, you know, sooner or later, we're going to put a four-quarter four game together and just uh, build off that. Have you ever had one of those days at work? We've all been there, those that you wish to forget, but mm -hmm. he stayed on the field, and instead of calling a night, you know, was there post-game shooting with a shooting session saying that when you're struggling, you go back to the fundamentals. And here's the thing, the beard went one for 17 from three on MLK Day. Let's go by the numbers. Those 16 misses are tied for the most in a game in NBA history. There have been seven instances of a player missing 16 threes in a game. Harden has six of them. For the game, 
The Beard missed 20 field goal attempts. Over the last two seasons, he has 15 games missing at least 20 shots. That's more than triple any other player. Russell Westbrook is next with four games. And since January 8th, Harden has shot 17% in the fourth quarter, the worst in the NBA. He shot just 5 of 30 overall and 1 of 20 from 3. Those 25 missed shots are the most in the league in the fourth quarter over that span. Lakers on the road in Boston. LeBron James in Springfield, Massachusetts earlier in the day watching Sierra Canyon and his son Bronny play. Then back at Boston before the game. But the powder toss and his teammates having some fun with it. And Kibble Walker 0 for 28 against LeBron. First quarter, Daniel Tice inside, finishes on the inbounds. Jalen Brown with the steal, can't get it to go. LeBron tips it to Kimba and Kimba tips it in. Oh well, foreshadowing of things to come. Wild play, Celtics up three at the end of the first quarter. Second quarter, sees lead by six. LeBron guarding Marcus Smart, drives and watch this pass to Ennis Cantor. I mean, this is, this, this is a real good look right here. That's, that's <laughs> really good. That's really good. Celtics up 42, 34 at that point. Later, Kemba, layup. No, mm. but Cantor put back 18 points, eight boards off the bench in the first half. Sees up 14 at the break. Third quarter, the lead is now 16. Brown driving over <laughs> LeBron. Oh, Jalen. Oh, the bench loves it. Here is Brown on what he just did to the King. Just being aggressive and uh, just made a play at the rim. Uh, I ain't gonna lie though, it was pretty nice. It was pretty awesome. You have it on a bucket list for today? Uh, I ain't gonna lie, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we, exactly. Later, Jason Tatum. Three up, three down, game high 27. His 23rd game this season with at least 20 points. A little later, Celtics up 25. Kimba fakes floater. He had 20.7 assists. He finally beats LeBron. Sees win 139-107. He's beating a lot of people. I, I, I bet you not a lot of guys that have a winning record against LeBron James. But I mean, I, I, of course, you know, I'm, I'm happy I got one at least. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's only one. One in 28. <laughs> you know, that's it. I'm on a new team, so I'm one to know. That was just a good old. Good old old fashioned bubble, and that's all. That's all. They beat us on all facets of the game um, from the outside, the interior, um, points off turnovers, and offensive rebounds was the main ingredients of his L. This was the Lakers' worst loss of the year by any measure. Their 139 points allowed were the most they've allowed in a game this season. Their field goal percentage defense and three point defense were also season lows. And if it could have been worse, it would have been worse if the Celtics didn't miss 10 free throws, tied for their second most this season. As for LeBron and his very busy day, here's Dave McMenamin. Uh, it's the Lakers, 139-107. They're on the short end. They had the 107. Uh, let's retreat it. Lakers have been one of the league's best defensive teams this season. Celtics lit them up a buck 39, the most L.A. has allowed this season. Boston dominated in transition. Outscoring the Lakers 27 to 9. Jalen Brown scored or assisted on 12 of those 27 by himself. Lakers, they're now just 1 and 5 this season when scoring under 10 transition points. Celtics also had the three ball working, shot 47% from distance, their best mark in a game this season in which they attempted at least 30 threes. Boston went 8 for 11 on uncontested threes, making more of those than the Lakers made total threes in this game. Let's head out to Boston. That's where Dave McMiniman is. And Dave, the Lakers don't lose often, and they don't lose by a lot often, and they don't lose by a lot often when LeBron James is on the court. They lost by a lot with LeBron James on the court. How'd they handle the beatdown? Neil, they were kind of licking their wounds in the locker room after this one. Kyle Kuzma said they were weird from an energy standpoint all night. Frank Vogel said he challenged the team to bring it at halftime when they're already trailing, and they really weren't able to find any extra reserve. Rajon Rondo said it was ugly, and LeBron said, you know, it was a good old-fashioned butt whooping. And you look at the numbers, it was really tough. They're outscored by 14 in transition, outscored by 10 on second chance points, outscored by 10 in points in the paint, and the Celtics shot way better from the three-point line. So you add it all up, and that's what a 30-point loss looks in the NBA. Well, feeling good might come Wednesday. They play the Knicks at Madison Square Garden. Dave McMenamin from Boston.
Before the game against the Celtics, LeBron James at the Hoop Hall Classic in Springfield, Massachusetts. His son, Bronny James, and Sierra Canyon taking on Paul VI. A young fan appears to throw something at Bronny James in the third quarter. That's not cool. Here's what LeBron had to say about it after the game. I mean, it's just disrespectful. I mean, um, and it was a little kid, too. Um, I don't know how old that